um, don't mind if questions pop up. So if you do have a question, um, you can go ahead and um, I think there's few enough, Mr. Reddy, you agree that um, if you have a question, you can just, you know, unmute yourself and just say, um, I have a question. Because if you have it, I'm sure at least one other person here has it too. Okay, so. and the only other disruption might be if, if uh, some students end up, you know, logging in, I'm gonna have to get them in and there may be a disruption to your presentation, but. And that's fine. Let's proceed. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And while I'm doing that, um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to make sure that I offered to Mr. Reddy and classrooms to, um, to just go over all of the different um, resources that AP has put out to um, support you guys through this new kind of way of testing. For sophomores particularly, you guys have never been in the regular AP testing environment so maybe this isn't so different for you as it is for maybe um, students who have taken AP exams before but I still wanted to make sure that um, I kind of walked through things for you with you um, as I've been getting updates I've been sharing them with the AP teachers so I'm sure that Mr. Reddy has either um, posted them somewhere for you to access um, so I'm just going to try to like quickly highlight them I'm more than happy to share this document with any student that requests it because it's all in one place. As I've been getting it from College Board, I've kind of been piecemealing it together and then sending it to the teachers, but that's been over the course of about a month. So it, this is kind of nice because it has the, it, hopefully you guys can see, can you see my screen okay? Okay, so this document has all of the links to all of the documents and resources that I'm going to go over with you. And then I've put on there um, some reminders that you guys should be thinking about. So just to start, um, the 2020 AP testing guide is something that um, you all, if you haven't done so, should definitely read. It's probably important as well if you have um, a family member or someone who you're going to be testing um, near or with that's going to try to help you keep your time because that's okay. If you have someone with you trying to help you keep your time, that's completely okay. Um, but if you, you have someone who's going to be, you know, there for that, they should read it too. Um, so I'm just going to link, uh, just show you real quick what it looks like so that if you don't know it by name, you can um, at least try to recognize if you've looked at it if you've accessed it, you know, from the resources Mr. Reddy has shared. Um, looks like I'm gonna be really, really slow. I apologize. Um, so. Tis the way, huh? So I'm gonna go back while it's loading. Um, so I'll go back to that once it's loaded. You need to make sure that you log into your College Board account like today, tomorrow, um, as soon as possible if you haven't done so yet, just to make sure that they have the right, that you have the right login that's associated with your account. We made sure we, you did this back in the fall when we actually registered you for the class, um, but sometimes students forget if they haven't used it in a while, you know, which email address, if you use multiple, you you know have in your login so that's that's important number one is you've got to try and make sure that is all updated um you have to i'm not sure what's going to happen if you can't log in um, as there's nobody at college board to call so um, i need you to figure that out now so that i can help anyone who's having issues or can't remember um, you also, this is really important. This is something that I just learned um, on Friday. I attended a, an online webinar. If you have Grammarly as an add-on to your Google site or whatever site that you use, um, you know, the internet that you use, whether it's Firefox, Safari, or Google, you need to delete that during your exam. 
Um, the issue with that is um, that the plugin that's needed to run that Grammarly program bogs down the program that's going to launch your exam, and the two cannot run simultaneously. So you can't not run the exam, so you have to get rid of Grammarly. And don't worry about that because you're never graded on your grammar use per se, unless it's like an English um, exam. So are there any questions about the Grammarly? Everybody's good with that? That's really important too. Um, I think that no, site can't be reached. Of course it can't be reached. Try to launch it again. Sorry, I'm trying to see if it will load again. Um, my apologies to go back, back and forth. Okay, so we're on bullet number four. Um, there is an AP checklist that College Board is suggesting that you try to print out or have beside you while you're taking your exam. Um, and I do have that already up, I think, I thought. Um, the thing about this though, is that you have to make a copy of it for yourself. So you have to download it as um, all files. So let me see if I can put you guys up there. All right, so um, do you see this is the link right from my document? If you go to this and download, do you see at the top where it says, um, sorry, at the bottom where it says format PDF document? If you download it just regular as a PDF document, you won't be able to select and choose on your own. So if you wanted this open as you're taking your exam in a tab, um, you can check it off, but you can't check it off in a PDF format. So you would have to download it as all files and then it will be on your desktop and you'll be able to check it off. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you have access to a printer, then you can just print it and um, just mark it off, you know, in pencil and pen the day of um, testing or a couple of days before or as, you know, as early as you want to um, print it. Um, but if you don't have access to a printer right now, there is that option that you, um, that you can do online just to be able to click the boxes you have to click it um, and save it as an um, as all files. Whoops, sorry, it's the wrong. Okay. Are there any questions so far? Everybody good? Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna get rid of that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to our first bullet, which was the AP testing guide. Can everybody see that okay? I think you need to share it on the screen again. Oh, that's right. Okay. Will do. My apologies. Um, there we go. Okay. So this is really, it's, it's, it's a very thorough guide and um, I've gone through it in probably three different webinars. It is a lot to take in. There's a lot of information. I'm going to try to go over as much as I can to make this um, if you haven't looked it over yet, but to make it a little bit less overwhelming because you'll have heard at least hopefully if you're listening to this before you look at it, but you really, really need to go through this um, as best you can on your own starting today if you haven't already done so. Um, I know it's a couple weeks before your exam, right? You guys are week two. Yes, May 21st. Yes. So, but this is all part of the preparation, just as much as content, familiarizing yourself with how to take the exam online is going to be just important. So, you know, do a little bit at a time because you guys do have a couple of weeks, um, but there's definitely a lot of important information um, and it is overwhelming, so I won't hide that fact, but it's also great information um, that you will need and you can just look it over several times. Um, and it does have all the same links that I have in my document. Um, so you can find it here too. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that you knew what I was talking about with the guide 
and um, hopefully you have access to that. And if you don't, like I said, I will definitely be happy to share this document in Google Docs with anybody who requests it. You can just email me. It's Jay Larson, and you could just type in Jessica Larson in your email and I should pop up. And you could just say, could I have your um, presentation doc today? I have no problem sharing that. Um, okay, so then we've talked about the checklist. If you guys are not taking any mathematical or formula based, so you can skip number five. Um, that's just if you needed like equations, there's like um, special equations and formulas that are, um, that you need when you're typing, um, if you choose to type your answer. So that's not for you guys. Um, make sure that you update all of your devices before you take the exam. Uh, you might wanna wait, I would say, two days before the exam. I wouldn't do that the night before because sometimes that can glitch um, like your web browsers and it might delete some of the changes that you've made um, to make sure that everything runs smoothly. I would do it um, no early, no, I wouldn't do it much after two days before the exam. Um, but just make sure that you're updating your devices. Um, one thing that College Board said that you're welcome to do is you have to launch, you have to launch the exam so you're gonna get an email. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna get an email two days before your exam. In that email is going to be your uh, AP ID, what they're calling e-ticket. So the e-ticket, um, that will have your specific eight digit ID number on it. So when you um, launch it, which you can launch as early as 30 minutes before your exam on exam day, um, when you launch it, you're going to have to take that ID number and it's kind of like a code to get you into the exam. So that's why it's important to make sure that your email that you're logged into your College Board account or is affiliated with your College Board account is the right email address that you're going to go to that day because that's what they're gonna send it to. Okay, does that make sense? Um, once you open the e-ticket email, do not delete that email because if you have technical issues during your exam, um, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, you're going to need that original e-ticket to request a makeup exam. So once you get your email two days before, bookmark it, um, make sure you do not delete it, make sure you know where it is, um, and do not delete it. Um, so up to two days before your exam, you'll be able to access the email. If you don't get an email two days before the exam, or the day before your exam, you have got to email me because that means there's something wrong somewhere and I need to make sure that I contact someone um, to help with that. Um, but as long as you were registered in the fall and I've double checked and triple checked everybody, you should, you should be getting that um, e-ticket. Um, okay, any questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna keep going then. Um, so another helpful option that College Board is um, offering is that, um, which started on Monday, you should be able to practice actually going through the exam day process. Um, and that is in an AP, that's the demo, and it's all the way down here. That would launch you to the demo. Um, and they're gonna just tell you you know, what to put in, they'll, they'll instruct you through everything. You won't get an e-ticket for it, of course, but that's where you could practice putting in your e-ticket digit when you get it. Um, that's where you would put in that ID number. Now, once, when you're taking the exam, you have three options of taking your exam. So when you get your email and you log in and your exam starts, you're going to have to type or you're going to have to write your response on a different tab. So if you're gonna use a laptop or a desktop computer, you're going to launch your exam from the email with the digit and the link they give you, but then you have to open another tab to launch whatever document-based um, program you're going to write your answer in. So you could use notes, you can use um, docs, you can use 
um, pages, whatever you have that you're more comfortable with if you're typing. So that's option one, but you have to type it into a different, you can't, you can't type it in the actual exam page. You have to copy or you have to upload your, um, so maybe we should just go through the demo. Do you guys want to go through the demo together? Or do you want to do that on your own time? What do you think, uh, everybody? I'm thinking at least the first, because like there's a portion, once you hit a spot in the demo, they're going to give you like a 10 minute window to type in the answer to something like, and again, you're just going through the practice of what the exam would be. Right. I think the question says right. something like, you know, write something about the book you've most recently read. But I think at least going through the first like five minutes of steps would probably be helpful to show everyone. You know, okay, the, let's you're do type that. Type in the word practice in all caps and those sorts of things. Yep. Okay, so I've just launched the demo um, because you have you have really three options. So I'm going to go to demo here. You can take the video tour if you want, um, but so this is just practice, and they tell you that right there. I'm going to continue. Okay, you would um, enter your personal information, review ways to submit your response, read exam demo question one, submit your response. So um, you guys, for your exam, you're only going to have one question, the whole entire exam. Um, some of the other exams have two questions, but you guys will only have one, um, the DBQ. So you would type your first name and then your last name and then your date of birth, just to make sure that th this is probably security to make sure that someone else is not taking um, the test for you. And I'm old, so don't laugh at my birth date. And then I'm going to put my, remember here is where you're going to put your um, email address that's affiliated with College Board. And then they're going to have you confirm it. And where are you taking the test? Nobody is taking the test at school, so please don't select school. Okay, permission to reuse. Um, it will not affect your scoring if you just decide to decline. Um, and you're going to have to agree to terms. So then you're going to continue. And my exam will begin soon. So then you're going to have to attach a file here. Um, that's where you have to be in another tab. You can't just type your answer right in here in the day of the exam. Um, so if I hit another tab and I want to go to Google Docs, I'll go through my email. Here we go. Sorry, it's launching my email, so I apologize. So I'll go to Docs and make sure that you, um, in every single page that you have for your document, you have to. Um, you have to put that ticket ID number, your e-ticket number at the top um, of each page, the page number and your initials. So my ID to get into this demo was practice. And then um, my initials, and then this is page one. Okay, makes sense. And then you would start typing your answer. Okay, make sure that you are going to title your document. Um, AP World History. And then um, you might want to put your ID number and at least your initials in there. 
Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, then go to share. And I'm only going to share because I'm going to get the link. And that's the link you're going to need to upload. Or you can copy and paste. That's an option too. You can copy and paste into here. So I could either get link, copy link, and then I'm going to go back to my AP window and I'm going to attach a file. Um, so copy and paste, there's the option to copy and paste. Here's the option to attach a photo. So if you decide that you would rather um, open up your email on the desktop, but you want to use your phone to actually type, then you would take a, um, you can upload to go back and forth. You can use two devices at one time. Um, the photo is if you, you choose to handwrite your response. If you choose to handwrite your response, you can use plain, plain blank white paper, or you could use white lined paper. You can use a pencil. Just make sure that um, just make sure that you are writing hard enough that they're going to see it, um, or you can use blue or black ink. Um, so my exam has started. You can read the ex the you know, um, take five minutes to create a demo response. Um, I put that my ID at the top, I put my initials. Um, remember that if you're handwriting, you also have to put the page number at the top of your response. Um, and then after, you need to make sure, see the time down here where it says time left to submit work? You're gonna wanna pay attention to that while you're taking the exam. As soon as it starts to go red, which is going to be with five minutes left to your exam, you need to start thinking about finishing up and uploading it. Um, College Board will allow you to request a late exam if you have technical difficulties, which means you didn't get to log in at all, um, something glitched for you, you had a power outage, your internet connection was lost. All of these things are they'll allow you to take the late exam for. Submitting your work after the five minute warning or the 45 minutes time is stopped, that's not acceptable. They will not let you take an exam for that. Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions about that? So it's gonna be very important for you to be watching your time. Um, I, I just wanna so interject I'm, a couple of points if that's okay. Um, sure. Yeah. Just in case anybody's looking at that time down below, don't panic because when you are actually taking the test, your time window will be significantly longer. The demo mm -hmm. time is just short because it's for the, the idea of practicing and walking through the steps of logging in and actually doing the exam. And if Ms. Larson, if you could open up the sample doc that was your response for a second, I just wanted to point something out to the students as well. Remember, that was in my that practice document, doc. You want to double check, and I don't know how many of you may have added Grammarly to your uh, Google account, but you want to go to add-ons and you know look at that drop-down menu, and if Grammarly's there, you want to get rid of it. Yes, and I did say that at the beginning. Yeah, and I just it's on. That. Yes, and it's on. But yes, this is good. This is where you would find if you have it or not. Maybe you added it on last year as a freshman and forgot that you have it. So you definitely want to check, and that would be in your doc. Um, so when you submit your response, as I said, you have two options if you're or if you're writing it on your iPhone and you like upload it to yourself, you can either copy and paste your inform your answer and then go back to your demo. Um, College Board suggested that you try all three options, but if you know that you're not going to handwrite it, then don't try that option. Just Decide if you want to just stick with your laptop or your desktop or your computer and then not even worry about practicing on the cell phone. But there's a possibility maybe there's a lag in um, Google that day or Google, Google Docs is not performing. You might want to then have an alternate plan to write your response if you have to. Um, of course, like I said before, College Board is going to allow you to um, 
If you have technical difficulties, they're going to allow you to request a late exam. Um, so I've been to my doc, and as you can see down here, there's an attach response. You can either attach the photo if you hand write it. So if you hand write it, you have to take pictures, and then you would have to attach the photos. Um, if you attach a text file, that's where you would um, put in the link, and then you would submit it. So um, I would browse for file, and I want to go to um, my Google Drive, which would be here and go to my drive and then it's right at the top there my ap world practice i don't know why it's not highlighted though um or i could um attach if i go back can i come back oh there it is so there's my the sample um, if I browse for file, um, I think it's because I didn't save it as, I think you have to save it as like a PDF or is it a doc? No, a doc is fine. And this is a doc, right? So let me see Google Drive again, my drive, open. So these are the things that um, I guess you would have to, you would have to, um, Troubleshoot. So, Mr. Reddy, do you know why I can't attach my Google Doc? Maybe if I hit all files. Huh. Maybe I'm in the wrong thing. Okay, so now you see that it's red. So I've gone down to, um, I've only got four minutes left to submit my work. So I am going to um, go back to my question and I'm going to paste my response. Oh, so my URL got there. There's my response. Um, one thing I want to mention is that you only have, um, you're only able to submit five pages for um, your answer. You shouldn't need five pages, but it's total five pages, whether you handwrite it um, or whether you um, type it. And I'm going to submit. And then um, we're not going to be able to return to the question once you complete the step. So make sure that you've attached the right um, document and then hit submit. So College Board suggests that you, um, as soon as you get your e-ticket or even um, the day before your exam, that you actually go and get your document if you're choosing to this way. Um, if you're handwriting it, you can also prep or prepare by putting in number from your e-ticket, which you're gonna get two days before the exam. So two days before the exam, you can start preparing. You can get your documents ready so that you don't have to worry about putting your name at the top, your ID number, um, and you can kind of go slow and methodical instead of feeling pressure the day of the exam to keep remembering to put all that information at the top of each page, because you have to do that at the top of each page. Um, does that make sense? So you can start preparing your documents that you're going to test in um, two days before your exam by putting your AP ID number that comes in your email on the e-ticket, your, um, your initials, and then I would number all the way up to page five. I would be ready with that because you don't know how many pages you're gonna take and you'd rather be um, safe than sorry and be prepared. Um, does that make sense? Okay, so everybody good on going through the demo? And um, like I said, I would try a couple of ways, um, either copying and pasting, because you can do the demo and, and any, no matter how many times you need to do the demo, you can do it as many times as you wish to practice. 
So I would practice all those options, uploading a photo. I would try copying and pasting. I would try attaching a file. As you can see, when I tried to attach my file, it didn't work. So make sure you're reading through that guide um, and that you don't have any of the add-ons and that you're saving your, um, your document in the right um, you know, um, format to be able to launch it. Um, are there any questions about that? I know this is a lot of information. Um, so number eight is just talks about your e-ticket. So your e-ticket is going to be given to you in two ways. You can access it through your email or on your college board account. So when you go into my college board, that's where you can as well. Um, so you can either find it through the college board account or you can find it through your email. So it, remember how I told you earlier not to delete that e-ticket email? If you happen to delete it, at least you can find your e-ticket through your college board account. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and like I said, prepare your document ahead of time with your eight digit ID number and initials page number at the top. You can do that two days before. Um, so if something goes wrong with your tech technology, um, with your bandwidth or your, um, with your, maybe your Wi-Fi or your internet connection, um, during the test, you will, um, you will be able to request, um, you will be able to request the, um, a makeup. So you will have access to a form to describe what happened during the test and you've got to be specific. Um, and remember, you can't say you didn't upload your answer before the time ran out. They will not allow you to take an, a makeup exam for that. Um, but so if something happens with your tech, they'll even allow you if it's really, for some reason, maybe you have younger siblings in your home and your testing environment is really loud and stressful and you don't feel like it was your best performance. Um, there is a way that your teacher can access your, the, your teachers are all going to receive your answers. So if they feel like you, um, your score isn't, like if they don't agree with your score, uh, or if you don't agree with your score, um, once you get it, you guys can, um, you can kind of appeal it. But if you're not, if your testing environment is not helping, is between the technology or like I said, background noise, or if, if things are not going right, you can request a makeup. And, but you have to submit that form within 48 hours of your original exam date and time. Eastern time is what they go by. Um, so they'll review your form and then they'll send you an email approving or denying your request. Um, but I think it's going to have to be I think the, the, from the sound of it, they're going to approve any kind of technology glitch or whatever. Um, does anybody have any questions? I think if you have some sort of conflict, but you guys are all only taking one, one AP exam, so you don't have a conflict on the day of AP exams so far. Um, I haven't heard of anybody who does have a conflict, but um, if you should, let's say the day before the exam. So you guys are supposed to take yours on, did you say May 22nd? 21st. 21st. Okay, so say May 20th, um, you, I don't know, you break your thumb on your right hand and you cannot type, okay? Um, there are a couple of options and I know this is like a wackadoodle example, but you never know what can happen. You can have somebody type your exam for you, like someone at home, a trusted adult. However, you have to notify me because you have to get kind of like um, a last minute accommodation is what they're calling it. Also, um, there are makeup dates. Those makeup dates are supposed to be held for students who have technical difficulties and request the makeup exam. But let's say, you know, I don't hope this happens to anybody, but say you wake up and you're, you're really sick the day of exams, you can't possibly take an exam. 
Um, let's say you wake up that day or something happens in your home and there's an emergency and there's no way you can take your exam, okay? Basically, if you don't take your exam that day and don't even start the exam, you don't even access your e-ticket, then College Board is going to automatically send you an e-ticket for the following, for the makeup exam. Does that make sense? But it doesn't mean you're at liberty to just skip the 21st and not try. If you have an issue that prevents you, you need to contact me. So if it's something where you, you can't physically take the exam, um, or if you have tech problems, then you have to fill out that request. But if you're sick, you are in the emergency room, or something prevented you from taking that exam, you need to email me, but I don't need to request accommodations. If you break your hand and can't physically type your answer, but you're able to actually answer the exam on the 21st, you need to email me whenever it happens and we'll request temporary accommodations for you to take the test that day. Do you see the difference between the two? Does that make sense? And if you have tech problems, then you have to, because that means if you have tech problems, it means you've actually put in your e-ticket ID information and you've actually launched your exam. So you have to request a makeup because they're going to think that you just didn't submit a response on time. So there are several scenarios that you would need different reactions to um, if you have to take the late exam. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so my last couple of points are to make sure that um, you're, you're following your Eastern time exam schedule, but I think all of you know that yours is at 4 p.m.? 2, 2 p.m., okay. So 2 p.m., that means that as early as 1.30 p.m., you can log in, kind of like we did with the demo, so we logged in the demo and it said your exam is going to start in five minutes. So you get like a five minute waiting time to get yourself set up, make sure you have access to those documents if you prepared them ahead of time. If you didn't prepare them ahead of time, you can start preparing them during that five minutes. Um, you can check your checklist, make sure you have everything you need. You can have your notes ready to go because you can have notes from your class. Um, any, any kind of um, materials, that's, it's kind of open note this year. So that's different. So just make sure you're set up, ready to go. Um, so it's very important to be logged in that half hour before your exam starts. Um, have a cup of water near you. Um, take some deep breaths. Do anything you can to kind of de-stress yourself because um, you'll do fine. Um, and then pay attention to that exam timer. I can't stress enough at the bottom when it starts to go red, um, which will be, for you, it'll start at 40 minutes. Once 40 minutes of the exam has started, has gone through, because you have 45 minutes to take answer and upload your, your answer. Um, you will not be able to request a makeup exam if you just fail to submit your answer in that amount of time. And you won't get another e-ticket because you've already launched your exam. And if you don't have technical difficulties, you can't request the makeup time. And then make sure you hit the submit button after you've uploaded your work. So just because you've attached your file or you've uploaded your photos if you're handwriting or if you've copied and pasted, doesn't mean that it's, it's sent. You have to make sure you hit submit, and then it's gonna ask you a prompt of, are you sure you're ready to submit? And you wanna make sure you hit yes, okay? Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions? This is a great time to ask. Um, this is all I had prepared. I don't know if Mr. Reddy, you think I forgot something? No, it was pretty thorough, thank you. I'm wondering if you could um, share the, this document with me um, as sure. a view only, and I, I can then post it on Classroom as well. I mean, students are welcome yeah. to ask you for it individually, but if, if I post the document on Classroom, then everybody Yeah, will. no, that makes sense, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unshare, um, but I'm gonna share this document with you first so you all see that I'm sharing it with you. Um, and all, like I said, if you open up that, um, 
if you open up the um, okay, if you open up your um, your guide, can you see that, or do I have to stop sharing and can no, you right. see the guide? Yep, it's it's there. Okay, so just remember all of those um, those sources are in this document too, but sometimes for me, it's nice to have it all in one place. So I can go to that sheet and I can say, okay, I can practice this or um, I can just access it really quickly. Um, but this is really nice because like it has my AP. So if you wanna check your account um, or if you remember, oh, I, I've gotta go check my account and make sure that I've got the right email address to log in and I remember my password. Um, but yeah, I just um, shared that with you, Mr. Reddy, I believe. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And does anybody have any questions? And if anything comes up, of course, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be happy to either answer via email questions or if Mr. Reddy, you feel like you need to invite me again, um, I'm definitely um, flexible to join. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. And if nobody else has questions, I think we're good. Like I said, this has been recorded and uh, will be posted in Classroom as a, uh, a YouTube link at some point in time. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. All bye, right. everybody. It's Take good care, to see everyone. you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.